Space expert Sarah Curtis is back with me now. Good to see you, Sarah. Hello. You're excited about this. You love this kind of stuff. Are you stuff, not aren't excited you? by this, though? Well, uh, well, hopefully you're going to explain <laughs> to me why I should be. Well, this is the equivalent of well, the whole mission of landing a fly on the speeding bullet in terms of the technological and engineering achievement. I think actually sometimes we take for granted and assume we've done so much more in terms of space exploration, but we've only been going into space for 50 years. We haven't sent humans beyond Earth orbit since the early 1970s. And We've never landed on a comet before, so this mission had a 12-year, over 6 billion mile journey across our solar system to rendezvous with a comet called churumov gerasimenko 67 p You can't wow. say that. I know it's I quite a mouthful. Um, and then land on it, send the Philae lander. And then this last final bit of the mission, which was actually conceived and developed in the in mid-1980s, was to actually send the spacecraft, which wasn't designed to land on Rosetta, down to the comet and to try and get that final bit of science back from the mission. So that, that's a bit of a bonus. I tell you what I can say is Andrea Accomazzo, which <laughs> is uh, the spacecraft operations manager from the European Space Agency, says Rosetta has been comparable to the moon landing. Really that big? Yes. Um, Why? It's Europe's Apollo moment in terms of what we're able to achieve and do. As I said, I think we, we take for granted what we're able to do. And there's so many questions out there that we don't know the answers for and extraordinary claims such as where do we come from, how did we get here, require extraordinary evidence. So we need to go out and get the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle to be able to put that picture together. So yes, it is Europe's Apollo moment. I mean, we've found out from this mission that this type of comet has the ingredients which could seed life. We think a comet colliding with an early Earth could have actually created us and given us life here on Earth. It's really fundamental stuff. And the, the science coming out, there are kids probably having their dinner now who are like seven or eight years old, who if they grow up to be scientists, will still be studying the data which has actually come from this mission. Yeah, we saw how it's inspiring young minds. And that, of course, is impressive. So what is the European Space Agency going to do next to keep inspiring us? Well, they're landing on Mars next month, so nothing big. Oh, that <laughs> nothing simple. big. I think one of the interesting things to come from this is um, Europeans are more reserved. NASA has always shouted about their achievements. They've got a great PR team. It is more reserved in terms of um, what they're actually doing. They don't shout about it. This was the first time they really told their story. They had these brilliant cartoons, which if you go on the EC YouTube channel, you can actually watch them. And they turned Philae, the Philae Lander and Rosetta into two little characters and really helped to tell their story. So actually, it's a, it, it shows how valuable communicating science and why we need to do these things is these things as much as actually doing the science itself. That's interesting. So they're getting they're getting the PR right. Are, are they competing a bit with NASA then? No, absolutely not. I just think it is different styles. I mean, space exploration is beyond borders. It's about collaboration. But what we actually are seeing a rise in is commercial space and people investing money because throughout history, government's going first and then private industry afterwards. So there's a lot of money to potentially be made in space. So it's a very exciting time to be alive and a very exciting future ahead of us. I'm excited now. There Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> Thank you.